This is the best. Is that what it's called, a Caesar? It's a called a Caesar, yeah. That's like a, that's like a Canadian Bloody Mary. Honestly, it's, it's oh, the, the yeah. one major advantage we have over Americans. Yeah. Your Bloody Marys are horrible, and our Caesars are oh. uh, these salads of delicious drinks. Like, they, they use horseradish. OK. It's amazing. Uh, yeah. like, OK. Like, we, we can say a lot of things, but I'm I'm sorry. I mean, I'm, I'm hungry. I want one now. We're back in beautiful Humboldt County, California, where the views are breathtaking, the home cooking is on point, and the backyard water slides, they're just good old-fashioned fun. Welcome to The Good Life on Humble Kind Farms, where Eric and Adam have all that and some exceptionally good quality cannabis to boot. Oh, and by the way, watch out for the guard goats. Hey there, I'm Amanda McKay, and this is Growing Exposed. Today we're going back to nature with Eric and Adam of the spectacular Humboldt Kind Farms. Now these guys took a leap of faith when they left their urban lifestyles in San Diego for a more humble existence in cannabis capital, Humboldt. And when you see their surroundings, well, you're gonna wanna take your hat off to them. Now today's episode is gonna be a breath of fresh air, but before we inhale, here's what else you'll see on Growing Exposed. First, we join the guys as they break the ice with some breakfast burrito teamwork in the kitchen. So we'll pull these in the morning, come in here, make ourselves up some burritos like we're doing right now. Then we're off to the races, man, to eat some food and then the day begins. Next, we take the very short walk across the yard to check out the thriving greenhouses. Well, that's really great structure. Yeah, we're, I'm very excited about this. This is gonna, you know, you, you get into like these multiple strains and sometimes you just like, man, I wish my entire greenhouse was this strain. Then we take a trip to meet Harry, owner of the awesome Route 101 Nursery, hydroponic store, and most importantly, legendary local waffle spot. Walmart's not here. There's Walmart's 40 minutes north. Good. So they can, they can keep it up there. We don't need it, we don't want it. David Robinson goes in depth in teachings of the Garden Sage. Green communities are healthy communities. And after all of that eating, there's nothing quite like a giant, soap-filled water slide to work up an appetite for the post-tour barbecue. <laughs> to start, let's join Justin and Eric in the kitchen to discuss why Humboldt has become known as the champagne of cannabis. Well, that's ultimately what the area is trying to say is Humboldt cannabis is better than everywhere else. It's like Champagne in France. Absolutely. And this terroir specifically has generational roots in cultivating cannabis. And on indoor levels too, like Humboldt grows really, really good indoor, Yeah. right? And you can go down to LA and you can find really, really good indoor, but you're not gonna find the same knowledge that's around you. Everybody is tied to this industry in some way, oh, yeah. right? Raise livestock, raise pigs, raise chickens, and grow cannabis and show that this is a viable method for other families across Humboldt County to embrace. We can make food for our family and we can make money to send our kids to school. You better believe it. You wanna crack some eggs with me, bro? Yeah, let's do it. Feeling like Gordon Ramsay up in here, dude. Let's go. Ready. This is uh, like MTV Cribs. Oh yeah, you want to see the fridge? Let's fridge check. the fridge. Fridge check, dude. Here we go. Beer. Probably. Maybe weed. We gotta stay healthy with the OJ. <laughs> okay, Tropicana. We got hot sauce and beer. Our own pickled onions, you know. This, uh, flavor it up. This house is not full of women. <laughs> there's no, there's no wives, there's no, there's no wives in this house. <laughs> Not really. No, this is actually kind of a low stock beer. This is a serious dude fridge. So, uh, what brought you to Humboldt, Eric? So one day I was just smoking some weed with my buddy, and we both kind of agreed that always wanted to do something more, but didn't really want to like sit in an office all day. And yeah. we both loved weed, and we, <laughs> that's kind of how we became friends. And I just yeah. ended up up here in Humboldt because the rules were good. They didn't, yep. It wasn't a limit on how many permits they're gonna issue. And Humboldt had the best fucking weed. 
You know? Yeah. I mean, you're 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 in the redwoods. It's ah, yeah. Beautiful. Like, I mean, yeah, you know, we're not. We, got, we just saw rainbow, like literally in the middle of cooking breakfast, right yeah. over our greenhouses. That's yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah. People may travel may, may travel their whole lives and never get to see something as beautiful as that. Mm -hmm. Or you say, my weed's growing in Humboldt, and they look at my farm, and there's a yeah. fucking rainbow happening here. We got the redwoods right over here. We're, yeah. we're making tacos. Where do you want to buy your weed from? Tacos. Oh yeah. We should eat tacos. Let's get these tacos in our faces. Oh yeah, dude. There's all these tacos made up. Let's do this. So now that we've snooped in your fridge, yeah, I'm more interested in what's in the closets and cabinets. <laughs> Let's have a look at these things. Yeah, this is the, this is the uh, the man room. This is the goodies. This, this is it. This is where we get all everything that we get, everything that we want to keep for ourselves. We throw in here. And these are your pre rolls. Those are my pre rolls. Yeah, you can find those in the stores right now. Um, you can find these bags in the stores right now too. This stuff yields six percent for ice water hash extraction, and so that's phenomenal. And so that's what we we got a full bed of that going right now. What um, strain is this? That's creme brulee. Creme brulee. And that's a aficionado uh, cut. Mm. This is some peanut butter breath. It didn't. And this is like a late late. That finished in like uh, November. Yeah, for sure. That finished in November, and I planted it in like August, late August. That's some good looking nugget. Oh yeah, dude. I'm not even sure what that is. I think it's just some like. So, oh, it's a mimosa. Oh yeah. Oh, this is our boy Teddy. He grew this. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, this stuff is good, nice man. Work, Teddy. That's yeah. Fire. That is nice. We're growing some mimosa too. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go check out the uh, the greenhouses right now. Let's go. to head across the yard to see how they grow in Humboldt. We're gonna talk OG strains and find out why so many growers have a special connection to this region. Jack Hare and uh, these varieties, uh, they're always gonna have a demand. I can tell you the first time that I smoked some like mango tasting weed. Yeah. And I can tell you the first time I smoked some like skunking tasting weed. Totally. You know, like those are like, those are some extremely memorable moments in my life. But OGs are continuously evolving. People are finding phenos new and exciting phenos of yep. different strains of OG out there. And getting I think, a little more gassy, getting just, yeah. just tweaking it, tailoring and hybrid, hybridizing and such. Absolutely, I think that OGs are evolving just like exotics are evolving. In the it's nice to see Kyan Farms is actually trying to, you know, accommodate old school with, you know, yes. getting into those exotics. Absolutely, there's always gonna be people who want a little bit of everything. For sure. Um, it's not always about what I want. Like, no. I, I got lemon tree right over there and I'm all about those citrus terps. That's like my, that's, that's like my go-to. That's your thing, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Upbeat, cerebral. Very much, yeah. yes. And people want ICC right now. People want Zookies. People want lemon tree. People want OG. Give them what they want. Absolutely. So we're cool. excited. Let's go, I'll show you guys my next greenhouse. This is where we're gonna be having yeah. a barbecue a little later tonight. This looks great for off season. Oh yeah, like, I mean, this has been, this is, we're now at three weeks into flower. Yeah. So we've been vegging like crazy. I could, you're uh, not running lights. We, no, we can. We just, this, you like don't need first, to. this is the first day of rain. So yeah. we're gonna have five days of rain. So I'll, I'll get these lights set up. Um, yeah. I'll get them turned on right now, but I haven't been, I haven't been needing to run lights actually the past like month. It's yeah. been, been great weather. So you can see after the color on these guys back here is, is much better. Dark it up, yeah. And I, I mean, these are, this is a new strain, new everything to me. She's a nice little um, lamp. She's got a killer nose. These things are so turpy. It's really got that jack and it's a two to one CBD too. Mm. Mm, I love this. That's right? two to one. Two to one. That's medicine. It is, man. And I mean, people want to get high and have healing effects at the same time. As they should. You know? And what you're doing here is called super cropping. 
Yes, yeah, we come over here, we're trying to maintain a good canopy height and yeah. utilize like all of our space. Um, so we came through here, we, we thinned all these out, we bent these over, and these will definitely turn into to big, hard knuckles right here. Yeah. And they'll become like highways for nutrients to like rise up into this bud. And each one of these nodes is gonna grow up and grow individual colas. Absolutely, yes. That's, uh, that's a pretty effective way of, of, of canopy management. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people will uh, scrog a plant and pull it completely sideways and open the whole thing right up. This looks like great canopy management. Thank you. I mean, I got to really give credit to where credit's due. Adam over here and, and Robert, yeah. these guys uh, busted their asses to, you know, really get these things opened up and do a lot of do a lot of great work in here when I'm not able to be here myself. Running a farm takes a little bit more time than, you well, know, listen, making sure that everything gets sold, you know. That takes a lot of the, time. But. The, uh, there's a real common misconception. Oh, they got to be cannabis growers. There's not a lot of work. They're just yeah. counting checks. But uh, the amount of work that goes into being able to pull off a crop like this. Absolutely. Every one of these plants is beautiful. They're all praying up, and you've got well, uh, eight different phenotypes in there. So we'll top dress individual strains if there's like five or 10 of something small. Yep. That way we can we can feed everything the base and then come back through and, and that's getting what it needs. Behind you here too, this is actually the one that I'm most excited about here in the garden is, this is the um, THC bomb. It likes this temperature. You can tell a plant when it likes its environment, and yeah. it loves, this plant really loves what you've got going on here. The cooler temperatures help with the terpene production. Mm -hmm. um, you know, terpenes are just a volatile substance on the plant. For sure. And they'll combust in the air, just like they'll combust when you put a lighter to it mm -hmm. with higher heat. Yep. So if you have a greenhouse that's like at 90, 80 degrees every day. You're losing terps. You're losing terps. Yeah. Earlier, you uh, let on to fresh frozen. That's the, that, that is, where you get the sauces. That's where you get the turp profiles that are just over the chart. Very I mean, they're, they're, they're just amazing. Like they, they have these flavors and aromas that, and fresh frozen is a really effective way of getting that. What we want, what we're, we're about is trichome harvesting and resin harvesting. These guys, we don't want this in our in our mixture. So we'll come yeah. through here, we'll take off anything that doesn't have any. Big any, families. Any family, yeah, big families. And take this, make this plant look really clean and then we'll just buck all the, all the buds yeah. off of there, get them into a bag, Get them into a, some, a tote, get them into the freezer, and get them on ice as, as quickly, quickly as, as possible. Yeah, as quickly as possible. Cool. Um, and cool. This, this plant is much different from any plant that I've grown. It's a little. I, I would like everything to be so, like super dark green, like we see over here. But yeah. I'm learning what this plant really needs, and I think actually these cloudy days are gonna really help this plant out a lot. It seems to do yeah, a lot some, better. Some some plants don't like a lot of light. No. Some plants. You know, love tons of food. It, it's, a, it's a matter of being able to manipulate exactly what that plant wants. Yes. And give it to it. Exactly, so, and it's, it's part and of the process. And you're doing that, and you're learning that, and that's really important with those individual phenotypes. It's not always rainbows and sunshines like you see out here. Sometimes we do have like, you know, it's tough. There is a steep learning curve. Yeah. You will make mistakes, but I don't look at things as failure or a loss, it's just like, what did I pay for that lesson? Yeah. What did I pay for that price? What, have, what did the lesson cost me? Yeah, what it cost me. For because sure. you never, you're never out until you that's quit. The way, that's the way you learn. Exactly. That's where you get better. There's not a plant in here that's unhappy. No, that, I will. That's, no. that's a great testament. We try to do just very, very little bit of water in here, um, keep our feedings up. Growing in here and in growing out there is completely different. Two different worlds. System. Yeah. Um, watering can take, I can go up to seven days out there. I mean, those roots can go, if it's in the ground, they can go as far as they want, as deep as they want. They go find deep. That water. Yeah. Absolutely, they go deep. Yeah. Let's go we'll check out more. Yeah, we'll go. So where does the fish keep his money? Where? The riverbank. Why are we friends again? I own the boat. Right. I need to buy a boat. Don't post that anywhere. I called in sick today. Look! <laughs> Holy smoke. You may have just captured the most important discovery of our time. Reports are now coming in about the story of the two fishermen who captured an unbelievable video. Launching our own investigation using sophisticated software, we confirm what appears to be Green Planet's backcountry blend, intended as an economical choice for outdoor growers. This granular nutrient system is designed to be broadcasted across your outdoor crop. Feed less with great results. Maybe not the breaking news you expected, but certainly is good news. 
In rural communities, the local grow shop is more than just a place to pick up supplies. And Harry's Route 101 is one of the best there is. Right now, we're going to take you on an exclusive tour of this local favorite. So, the cornerstone of every community is, in my opinion, the local grow shop. And Eric has brought us down to meet Harry, grow shop owner of Route 101. Where are we exactly? We're in a town called Rio Dell, and on a map, Rio Dell is the epicenter, the direct center of Humboldt County. How long have you been doing this? Well, well the store's been open. We just celebrated our two-year anniversary uh, on 420. Cool. Um, kind of, you know, kind of ironic. Yeah, but that's, that's when I got. Funny enough, that's when I got my permit from right. the county too. Yeah. Funny enough, exactly. 420 was the Absolutely. exact date we incorporated uh, our retail store. Oh, oh really? my gosh. Can, we, can we bring that in? No, right no, here? no. I, uh, yeah, we yeah, didn't yeah. even know what 420 was in 1993. <laughs> right. I'm not even kidding. That's yeah. hilarious. And it just so happened we incorporated 420 of of Dude. 1993. It's a That's, monumentous day, man. So since then, uh, I mean, we got voted by the public as the best hydroponic store in Humboldt County, which is a complete honor to me. It's not something that we won. It's something that was voted for us. Mm -hmm. You know, working with the community, not against the community. Sure. Not trying to just open the doors and rake in a bunch of cash. Yeah. Instead, we take the money and we put it back in the community in one way or another. These guys have been gone an extra mile to work with me and help me succeed in times when you know, I was not on my best foot, right? And they come through and like said, do this, try this out. And giving me the flexibility in order to go through and make those things a possibility and, and get some successful grows under my belt. And that's really like, when they do that for me, it's like, I feel so like, thankful to have these guys here. I have a personal relationship with all the local farms, all the legal farms. I can take anybody on tours to these farms and I don't even have to call them. Yeah, and, I you show have, up. and you have a major vested interest in making Absolutely. sure that they succeed. Absolutely. They do well, we do indirectly well. you do well. I want to see him succeed. Of yeah. course, that's, yeah. that's, that's the win-win. Listen, you know? they always said, I, I always said I won the lottery, right? By having the opportunity to work in this industry. I've always believed that. And it wasn't, it wasn't like a free lottery. I've worked my ass off. And people that cultivate are fully aware of how much work it is. People that own retail stores. Yeah. You're very aware. You stand in every single beam in this store. This is one of the most beautiful hydroponic stores I've seen, and I've been in hundreds. Oh, thank you, I appreciate that. It's a gorgeous shop. You have a lot to be proud of. Thank you. And everybody that walks in here says the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, that wasn't my intention. I just polished a turd. Yeah. I just made this turd into a diamond. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't realize how nice it was until I hear That's people. That's someone in a nutshell. Yeah, man. <laughs> right. That's someone in a nutshell right there. It's so That's nice to actually guy. have someone walk in also. Right and be like, you know what, I'm gonna have a waffle. So yeah, let me show you the waffle shop. It's called Wild Wood Waffles, cool. and we serve waffles. The idea behind it is it's a, what we like to call a waffle taco. So all the waffles are folded up like a taco, and they're wrapped up to go, so you can eat them on the go. Yeah. People come here at seven o'clock in the morning because we were the first store to open at 7 a.m. You open this retail store at 7 a.m.? This retail store is open at 7 a.m., seven wow. days a week. Because, hey, guess what? Hot farmers aren't all lazy. They're, they're farmers. They're farmers now. Yeah. They've always been that way. Yeah. I hated having to wait till 9, 30, 10 o'clock right. for the grocery store to be open. open. Yeah. You want to try one? Yes. Gentlemen, you guys want to try yes. one? Yeah, let's, let's, let's get this. Now, this is about an hour away from our headquarters. It's beautiful up here. Yeah, this is Pacific Northwest. This is, this is what it's all about. This is why we are where we are. We can live anywhere in the world. We can choose to live anywhere we want. We love living here. I agree. First kayaks ever in this lake, probably ever. I would hazard a guess and say first human beings in this lake. I mean, this is a glacial fed lake. We're up here to demonstrate how beautiful and how clean our water is and the environment that we have and care and protect. Every little bit of green planet nutrients encompasses this. The purest, cleanest water, the, the highest quality source nutrients. We care very much about ensuring that your plants can get the best nutrition possible. All the water that we get comes from lakes and glaciers like this. One major advantage we have over every other nutrient manufacturer globally. I think green plants have a major role in the future of the industry. We're innovators, we create new products every day, and we'll be at the forefront of the movement. We're quality focused, we're result based. We have to make sure the end user has a positive experience every single time they use a green plant product.
Now it's time to link up with David Robinson to find out why green communities are often healthy communities and teachings of the Garden Sage. People love cannabis, so it's inevitable that industry will crop up all over the world around this special plant. With the advent of indoor gardening, we saw the emergence of a specialized group of retailers called hydroponic stores in the 1990s, with the greatest concentrations in British Columbia, Canada, and California, United States. That tells you what was happening in those communities. And while it may not have been completely wholesome at those times, it is my belief that communities that are based in cannabis production tend towards a healthier lifestyle eventually. Green communities are healthy communities. And I've always said, the hydroponic store is like the village market. Now I know that the organic food store is actually the village market, but when you have a high percentage of growers in your community, they don't really talk to each other at the organic food store. But when they come in the hydroponics store, they feel they're all comfortable together, all on the same ground. And it really is an incredible place of community. That's why in my store, I've always given out drinks and little snacks and treats. We see at Route 101, they've got the Waffle House. Like this is the spirit of the hydroponics store. So in a day and age when you can opt to buy things online, you really have to consider for a moment what you want to support. If you walk into your local hydroponics store, you'll often find behind the counter someone who's passionate and knowledgeable that will take a vested interest in your success. And that is the spirit of what we do. It's changed a lot over the years as the world has gradually come to accept and validate the worth of our contribution to society and the future for the hydroponic store is brighter than ever. Remember, cannabis has only begun to change the world. The future for the hydroponic store is brighter than ever. I'm beginning to think that this episode should have been called Eating Around Humboldt because now it's time for some barbecue, some beers, and a water slide? Let's check in. So that was a great experience meeting Harry at Route 101 Nursery. Oh yeah, glad you had a good time. Yeah, loading up on all of uh, your newts. Let's get them out and uh, load up. This is the final step. Bringing them back, stacking them up. Nice, you got some Royal Gold King mix? Oh yeah, man, I love the start. I love the stuff for my starts. It's really good. It's kind of how I amend new soil back in, but we got all the massive. massive. So what's up with the massive? What do, you, what do I want to be using that? Massive is uh, really, really good for bulking and creating size, increasing aromas. It's got all your amino acids. It's got uh, PK spike. It's got carbohydrates. It's got basically everything in the kitchen sink is a massive designed for bloom and increasing overall size. Yeah, I, I've definitely noticed like good results using um, the resin, definitely in the turp production and the carbo. I like the like all the different types of sugars that are in there. Totally. Um, easier for certain strains to break down. Yeah. Um, you're gonna get a better tasting flour out of it just from using basic molasses, I feel like. For sure, I mean, that's where any carbohydrate comes in. It's basically microbe food. Yeah, so exactly. Whenever you see anybody selling a, a product with carbohydrates, it's designed to increase the microbiology in the root zone. Yeah. Resin is a completely different animal. Um, it's unique. There is no other product like resin in the industry. Um, it's basically a blend of vitamins. It pushes and forces the plant uh, into a stress mode without causing too much stress that the plant reacts negatively. Yeah, herms out. That herms kind of out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, and that's the whole thing. That. The, the terpenes, the, the trichomes, those are natural defense mechanisms that the plant naturally produces. For sure. Um, and they taste good. They taste good. They, they taste and good. they have healing effects too that we're still learning a lot about. Sure. So getting... cannabis is the only plant that has 200 plus terpenes. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, where linalool is only become from lavender, mm -hmm. you only get a couple yeah. terpenes. Cannabis is just this plant that has such a massive bouquet, which is why we get all these crazy aromas and flavors, tangines and lemonine, and all these things that um, create 
grape flavors and you know these blends of different terpenes and different percentages. Yeah. Uh, you, you know we've seen in the last five, ten years a massive influx of different phenotypes promoting crazy aromas and flavors. You're kind of biohacking the yeah. plant. You know, yeah. it's not, this doesn't have any MPK, so this has nothing Correct. like of that, of that sort. So you can really add it to a pre-amended soil or make it, add it to your own recipe. Mm -hmm. um, and you're kind of getting to that science level of totally. what the plant, how, the, how is this plant gonna react? And some stress is good stress. Yeah. You know, the plant needs to feel like it, like it's being need, pushed. You're being pushed to its extremes to be able to produce that resin, For sure. that production. Here at our farm, we don't try to uh, water to drain. Yeah, you know, yeah. We try to just like give it micro doses of what it needs, keep that soil really healthy, and then once we're done, we'll we'll have our pre-amended dirt ready to go in there. We'll bring that dirt out, and we'll flush it out here. Um, usually from like on days like today where it's helping us out, we're getting yeah. tons of rain. Yeah. Hard to pull the tarps, but it's easy to flush the soil. So. Totally. Yeah, good, your pros good, and cons. Good cultural practices, right? A absolutely, yeah. And then that defines a good grower versus a novice. Yeah. And uh, it's great to see you using resin, and I'm, I'm really happy you're having great results with it because that's, yeah, that's why we do what we do. So let's load this up and uh, sure. let's. Oh, uh, yeah, oh, you take the light one, I'll get the heavy one. Yeah, no, I, got no, I got this. Don't worry, guys. I, I got, got all the heavy lifting over here. <laughs> In typical humble kind style, before firing up the barbecue, the guys decided to work up an appetite on the backyard water slide. I did have a go, but I guess the camera wasn't rolling. Thanks so much for coming out, guys. I think this is the end of the tour. We got a barbecue cooking in the greenhouse, and I'm hungry. I don't know about you. I'm ready. I mean, the Humboldt hospitality has been fantastic. I love the quote, growing in the heart of Humboldt with a SoCal vibe. We're about to go have some, have some grub, and uh, thanks so much for showing us around. Appreciate Only way it. we know how, man. Tacos awesome. and good weed, man. Let's go. Let's go. Whoa. Woo, it's toasty in here. Bye. Till next time. Hope you enjoyed getting back to nature in Humboldt County with us. As always, you can check out past interviews and full episodes of the show at growingexposed.com. And we always love to connect on social media. But for now, I'm Amanda McKay, and this grow has been exposed.